Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back. You are watching For You Take. Last time we reviewed the official and unofficial builds of Evolution X 7.3 and 7.2, respectively. Finally, the new build of unofficial Evolution X 7.4 has been released few days back. As the official retrofits Evolution X builds are using the super partitions. It's not supporting the normal TWRP flashing process, which is very annoying. And once you flash with the official Evolution X, you can't switch other ROMs easily. You have to restore the Oxygen stain using the MSM tool and needs to use the flashing of ROMs from the scratch, as you did first time flashing of Android 12 custom ROMs. So I will review only the unofficial builds onwards. So today in this video, we'll see what's new in the about phone. Performance comparison of our old Evolution X was new Evolution X. New features added in the new build. At last, I shown some bugs and my final verdict. So watch the video till the end. Flashing is same like we did for the older builds. Download the ROM zip file. Remove the pins or the password lock on your phone. Boot phone in a TWRP. In the TWRP, tap install and flash the ROM zip file. Now tap advanced. Tap install current TWRP. Once done, tap wipe. Then tap format data. Type yes. Here I can't able to format data even if I enable the RMRF setting in the TWRP. So skip that step and tap reboot to the system. So phone started to boot into the boot animation of Evolution X. Now without further ado, let's get started. As you can't able to format data in a TWRP, all the data and the applications will be intact and the new ROM will boot into the launcher directly without issues. Now let's jump to the about phone to check the details of the new update. So this is the same Android 13 based build with the old material u clock easter egg. This is the unofficial Evolution X build 7.4 called Delta version. Security patch is of December 2022. Finally we got the first December security patch rebuild by Evolution X. Kernel version is 4.9.227. This is the MCD kernel R19 build date with the latest Clang 2 Gen 14. Kernel is enforcing build date of ROM is 15 December 2022. So most of the things are updated to the latest sources. Now let's compare the performance of the new ROM with the old version of Evolution X 7.3. Initial impressions of the ROM is very good. It's fast and fluid. I didn't face any lag anywhere in the ROM. ROM constantly running on the 60fps screen refresh rate. All the applications are running on the 60fps rate, so fluidity is amazing. I didn't fail any time I am using 5 years old device. When I ran the Geekbench for the single core, I got the score of 508. For the multi core, I got 1923. If we compare these results with the official Evolution X users, there we got 495 and 2020 respectively. So slight difference found between the official and unofficial builds, but it's not causing too much performance difference. When I did the Hulkan graphics API test, I got the score of 2030, while on the old official Evolution X score was 1854, which is way lower than the current build. So overall, both the builds are same in the numerical and the real world performance uses. All the unofficial ROMs by the very toss are performing very good. Even the last library OS was outstanding. Now it's time to check the new changes or the features I found in the ROM. In the Evolver tab and under the themes of the setting, we get the dark theme toggle. Here we get the one new theming option called as the use custom themes. We get the bunch of the new themes which enhances the look of the device like black, clear, vivid monet, etc. Clear black theme will apply currently running wallpaper as a setting background. In the quick setting panel, we get the clock toggle to hide the quick setting clock. Or we can also reduce or increase the clock size using the clock size slider available here. Under the status bar tab, we get the bunch of the battery bar style which is giving amazing look to the status bar. Under the animation section like the Siberia, we get the power menu pop-up animations. We also get the toggle to disable the charging animation here. Here we get the bunch of the new power menu animations that you can check on the screen. Except this, all the old customizations are available in the Evolver tab. Next, under the OnePlus Extras tab, we get the Allah Slider custom features. 
Here you can customize the top, middle and the bottom position of alert slider for the different actions. It's working very well as you can check. I'm using it for the activation of flashlight. In this Iberia ROM, this setting is buggy. ROM is now comes with the Dolby Atmos like this Iberia ROM, but the Dolby Atmos version is different here. By default for the speaker, smart audio profile was activated. If you connect the Bluetooth device or the wired earphones, other profiles will get activated like the music, movie, custom, etc. We can also tune them as per our wish also. There is a surround sound virtualizer toggle also available here. Except this we get the panel modes. Here we get the different color profiles. I especially prefer the AMOLED white color gamut. We also get the kernel level KKL setting to tune the colors of the display panel. DC dimming toggle is also available here. Instead of this we get the, all the old settings like the speaker and the microphone volume gain sliders. Automatic high brightness option and the vibration control. Here one thing I noticed is that the haptic feedback vibration is lot more improved in the, all the custom ROM on the latest sources. ROM comes with the fully working OnePlus camera application. All the things like the night mode, portrait mode for the, both the front and the back camera, 4K system face video recording, slow motion and the time lapse for the video recording, pro mode, all the things are working. So no need of the Gcam because now OnePlus camera is fully working and it is giving the better images quality than the Gcam. ROM comes with the fully working OnePlus Gallery application also. In the quick setting panel, like the old data and the Wi-Fi expanded tiles, now we get the expanded Bluetooth tile also. Here we get the details of all the Bluetooth devices connected with the one tab. So these are all the pros and the features of the new ROM. Now let's check out some minor bugs. Hey Google or the OK Google tab is missing here, so I can't able to use the voice activation of Google Assistant. In the Cyberware ROM, it was available and first time work for my device in the custom ROMs. Wide one is on L3, so we can't able to stream the Netflix and the Amazon Prime at the full HD resolution. Except these minor issues, I didn't found any bugs in this amazing ROM. Now only one point is left to test the battery life. Because of busy schedule, I was not able to switch this device as my primary device. But now I will use this device as my primary device for the two days and will give you the full battery results. Until then if you think this video helped you then please do like, share and subscribe. Press the bell icon for the notifications of our upcoming content. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Take care. Bye bye.